Awo Shalom Salam Tana Tina Yis Terling Ine Rasia Dinos Tesari Ineng I am Wendem Yadon of the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty Ye Yehuda Moa Anbesa Machiber Greetings brothers and sisters and we're going to seek to continue with this um, this sabbatical teaching, reasoning, and feeding from the Torah portion of our studies. And we're in um, Exodus, the 14th uh, Parsha, or Kufl, which is the portion known as Wayera or Vayera. Now, we've we broke down some of the etymology, <coughs> some of the important etymology that's connected with even, first of all, deciphering the meaning of the meaning of the name because it's very important names are very important to define them in their both the, the linguistic context as well as the cultural context now we posted up a video um, concerning uh, Exodus decoded and this is a documentary from the history channel I think it was produced by uh, James Cameron and um, some of the research of um, one uh, European Anglo-American uh, Jew named uh, Simcha uh, Jakobovitsky, something to that effect. And um, it's a good documentary. It presents a lot of the facts that some of them were known but suppressed because a certain spin on the biblical story has been presented and put forward. And we know this from the Charleston Heston movies, and from the whole whitewashing of it, and the and the over uh, simplification, and even a mockery of what Exodus really is about. Who does the Book of Exodus really, firstly and primarily, speak to? Who are the the Israelites, the Beta Israel? Who are the Jews historically in the true cultural context? Because that's important when we start now to do the chronology and to uh, trace the story from then to now. Now, we accept the fact that our ancestors and we, by extension, are the descendants of the Beit Israel, or the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, here, here's part of this video here playing on this. Uh, let's see if we can... Okay, now this is talking about the ten plagues, and this is part from the Exodus decoded. I think something known as the virtual, the virtual museum, the virtual museum of the Exodus decoded. We caught this up here on I think it's Spike or Spike TV. It's about a five-minute um, intro to I think the another spin-off from the basic Exodus decoded. But we highly recommend, first of all that um, our brothers and sisters and those who are studying with us get a copy or at least firstly just get to see um, this particular um, documentary from the History Channel known as Exodus Decoded. But in the last few days of our own um, you know meditations, reasoning, you know this has been in our mind this whole meditation because we've touched on previously and many of the and the students know this, we've touched on Exodus from the more mythological perspective and seeing that the story and the essential um, um, themes and the ideas, the, the mystical, the metaphysical of the book of Exodus is true from even an ancient Egyptian when we start to reconstruct ancient Egypt and the ancient Egyptians from a Afro-Shemitic, but from a black perspective, you understand, from the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, or from the Beta Israel, or the Ethiopian Hebrew perspective of the story. Now, there's a couple of um, books here that we want to that we want to recommend as well, and this is for the students and those who want to go a little bit deeper in their studies. First of all, which one first we want to recommend? First of all, there's this particular book that we have um, reprinted and published again. In fact, we had to retype set it. 
And so that gave us the opportunity, since the book was out of print, and retypesetting it to add additional information to it, including certain pictures and certain other visual aids and footnotes, certain areas to bring the information more up to date. But even from its particular time, it was very much up to date. And this is one of those books that has been suppressed by so-called mainstream whitewash or Eurocentric um, both with Judaism and, and the, the Gentile world system or white supremacy or the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the present world paradigm, the present world system that we're, that we're in or that we're, we're passing through, that we're exodusing from. Now, right here, this is called uh, Israel's, Israel's Debt to Egypt. Right, and this book right here by Edward uh, Sugden, this particular book, this is the cover of it. Right, this is the cover. It's available at www.lojsociety.org, and you can hit, click on the books, the books tab, and find more of this as well as other books that we are publishing. Plus, we have certain free downloads also available and other study materials. Um, resources and reliable references, so one can get an accurate, an accurate, um, accurate information. Accurate information is important because the Black Lord and Savior we know as the Moshiach, Jesus Christos or Yeshua, he says that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The prophet Hosea, of a similar namesake, Hosea Yeshua, he says that my people perish. In other words, the, 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 the prophet is now speaking the word of the Lord, the word of Adonai, and saying that his people, his particular people, not saying just all people, but is specifically speaking of the Beta Israel. So we must identify firstly and foremostly who are the Beta Israel in their historical context. And this is where we run up against a lot of whitewashing and racism and as uh, Gerald Macy said, the European madness, a lot of madness. And, and people say, oh, it's racist for us to say that the Israelites were black and to present the evidence, so forth and so on. No, it's just factual. It's just true. So that's, that's the, those are basic levels that we go over and we remind perhaps the new viewer or one who is viewing this video, you understand, for the first time, or one who might have gotten sporadic little taste of black Israelite consciousness here and there. You understand to disconnect the story and to bring it more, the true narrative. So this is looking at Egypt and the Exodus from an Ethiopic reconstruction. This has been one of the themes in our head and heart for a while, an Ethiopic reconstruction of ancient Egypt. But the first thing we need is some of the basic materials and the basic um, information and become familiar with some of the basic evidence that's already out there, even in plain sight. So this is Israel's debt to Egypt, right? This is our reprinting and publication of Israel's debt to Egypt. And this particular book was uh, first, um, let's, let's find out when it was first uh, printed and published. This book was first printed and published Several several years ago, I think in the early 19 or or late 1800s. But it's amazing. It's an amazingly um, interesting and even accurate book. And the first question that many would have is that, well, if this was already published um, early in in um, in history in his story then why don't they include a lot of the information that basically um, marries the historical and the cultural and the linguistic aspects of Egypt with the Bible? And it's plainly and simply to see that it's a part of the European racism and the whitewashing and the distortion of the academia or the European academia that has contributed to this particular confusion. Now, um, this book, or oh, we should just look at the back, it was 1928, 
1928. This is when this particular book, Israel's Debt to Egypt by Edward H. Uh, Sugden, was originally published. This book right here. This was originally published by the Epworth uh, Press in London and written in English. Now, we're, republic we're republishing it, and we've added some additional information to it. So this is a very, very important document right here, and you probably can find um, some versions of it already on the Internet for free. But if you want to get a hard copy for your studies and for your library or the Trueberry, then go to www.lojsociety.org and click on the Books um, tab and the Books link. Now, this is one particular book that we find to be very important, and we probably will make more references to it, but we want to remind some of the students and those who might be having certain, um, if not difficulties, but there's certain lack of um, contextual clarity, this is a good book that will help link ancient Egypt to the Bible and will really expand from an Ethiopic and a black and a true perspective what the book of Exodus and what the Bible is speaking about in its context. Now that's one particular book and this is another book right here. This is this is 1835. This particular book originally was 1835 and this is, this is called um, this is under our Egyptology, Hebrew Studies, and the Bible. This is John Lamb, John Lamb's 1935 Hebrew Hieroglyphics. And now this contains and explores this particular book, the original pictures applied to the interpretation of various words and passages in the sacred writings of the Hebrew Bible, and especially the history of the creation and the fall of man. Much has been learned and discovered since Mr. Lamb first presented his findings and speculations. However, his work still remains relevant, and it adds to our understanding, or for Anas Rastafari, our overstanding, if you please, of one of the earliest and still most noteworthy for its time and substance. And now Mr. Lamb successfully makes his point by comparison after comparison and adding Hebrew scriptures to his interpretations of the hieroglyphic characters that is both re relevant and profoundly insightful. We hope the reader and student of this subject will be inspired as we have been to follow up on some or many of the initial claims that's made by the said author of this particular book. And this is John Lamb's, it's actually the fuller title is um, uh, Hebrew hieroglyphics, Hebrew characters derived from the hieroglyphics by Mr. John Lamb, Hebrew hieroglyphics. Now, this is a very, very important work. Now we see that a lot of the modern um, Egyptologists, some of them, and even some of the so-called, quote, New Ages, have begun to accept some of the initial findings of ones and ones like um, this was Edward H. Sugden here and the, these are two books that we highly recommend for like Exodus Old Testament studies and Torah scroll studies these particular two books right here now we're going to point to some evidence and reference make reference to these books this is why we wanted to bring these particular documents forward so these are published by LOJ Society and yours truly. Now, this is another book which is not published by us, but we also highly recommend it. It's by uh, Legacy Ireland. Legacy Ireland, and it's called Amarinya and Tigrinya Al Hieroglyphs for Beginners. And this is the cover of it right here. This is the cover of it right here, as you can see. All right. And now what this particular brother here explores, which is very insightful, this, this particular document, you might have seen the video. He has, um, there's an ancient, good spelled, um, let's show you right here, where you can go to the website, actually, and perhaps you can get more information from the website. He probably has more information there. Um, 
there was more online. I don't know whether he took it off because he was going to put it into a book form. I mean, but this is a very interesting book because um, uh, or geb, 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 uh, like geb in ancient Egypt, but geb is the ancient name of Egypt from an Ethiopic perspective. And he says, for hundreds of years, Western researchers have sought to unlock the words hidden deep within the ancient Gibbet or Gibbet inscriptions, but they never have known the languages the inscriptions were written in. This is one of the things that people say it's hieroglyph, but there were different languages, even in different periods, in which different hieroglyphs were written in. And the similarity um, of this for us is like looking at um, Western Latin. In the words, we, we, we have Latin, right? And we have English. English is written in Latin characters. We have French. French is written in Latin characters. We have German and Spanish. All of these European languages are written in these particular type of characters. Now, some of the European languages even add other um, characters or modify, like we have, for example, Cyrillic, which is um, Russian, which is the Russian script, and that's a very recent, actually, script, um, the Russian, martyred in Russian language, so forth and so on, but that's a modification they draw even on Greek. Now we have Greek, you understand, which is a little bit different, but then the link with Greek, with the Sabian languages, and with Coptic. See, Western academia tells you that Coptic came from Greek, but then history will tell us that the Greeks learned civilization from the Egyptians, and even to some extent from the so-called, quote, Minoan or the Kepchu, the Kepchu people. And that's, a, that's another important link with this particular matter that we would like to touch on. Now, the author, um, Legacy Ireland, of this particular work right here, Amarinya and Tigrinya, um, Kal Hieroglyphics uh, for Beginners, he goes on to state that now Amarinya and Tigrinya, Kal Hieroglyphs for Beginners, takes you where Egyptologists never could, into the hearts and minds of the people of ancient Gibt, or Gibt, 5,100 years ago. That's 5,000. 100 years ago. In this book, you will find the actual words from Amarinya and Tigrinya in which the ancient inscriptions were written by those ancient Amara, or what we would call today the Amhara, the Amhara people. The ancient Amara and the Akela Gezai merchants, business people, and royalty. Travelers to Egypt can especially benefit from this book as it provides them a true sense of the culture to be discovered on their trip, still alive and well in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Both countries represent the soul of ancient Gupt, but only a visit to Eritrea and Ethiopia first can give travelers to Egypt a face-to-face -face meeting with descendants of these great people who invented writing, were skilled in mathematics, and built the now famous pyramids and the other monuments. Amarinya and Tigrinya Kal Hieroglyphs for Beginners will give you a new insight into ancient Gibbet as you can never get anywhere else today, expanding your understanding and dispelling many myths. What should we clarify many whitewash Anglo and European um, based myth that we have come to believe or be naive today about the once great ancient nation that lived independent for nearly 3,000 years. In this book, and with a trip to Eritrea and Ethiopia, discover the soul of ancient. Egypt. Now, this is this particular book by our brother Legasa, Legasa Ireland. And once again, the title is Amorinya and Tigrinya, the Kal Hieroglyphs 
for beginners, and it's a very important um, it's a very important document. We find this to be a very important book. We give so much thanks that this brother and those who have worked with him have, and there's many Ethiopians who are beginning to explore this aspect of the link between the ancient Egyptians and logically the Ethiopians, or the people just to the south of the Nile River or the Hape, you understand, or the Gion River that we know as the River Nile. Now, it's very interesting, and it's very um, suspect, very much suspect and suspicious that the majority of European and academic uh, academia and the institutionalized um, scholarship of uh, white supremacy, in other words, has explored so much about Egypt and speculated on so much but have denied the very clear and obvious origins of the ancient Egyptian civilization to ancient Ethiopia and even the connection between Moses or Musa, you understand, his Ethiopian wife. I mean, that's right there in plain sight in the Bible. And so when we saw this particular Exodus decoded, Previously, and we've watched it um, different portions and gone over it. Could we like to even annotate some of these documentaries that we've seen, and even some of them that we distribute? We like to further study them, not just to put them out, but take a look. Say, let's look at this particular documentary, and let's try to break it down. Let's find out where we find yes, this is true. Give thanks, but this right here is questionable or suspect, or perhaps whether intentionally or unintentionally, they have avoided some central truth that we now can do the legwork, the academic work, and once again bring front and center for our people. Because remember what the word says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So my brothers and sisters, these are some of the books right here that we're recommending. We would have wanted to recommend it um, earlier, but... You know, as we go forward, we learn things, and this is where these sort of updates come forward. So these are three particular books. Once again, Egypt, Israel's debt to Israel's debt to Egypt, by Edward uh, Sugden, available at www.lojsociety.org. Click on the books tab and link, and uh, Hebrew um, hieroglyphs, the Hebrew hieroglyphs. Right here, Hebrew hieroglyphs, uh, Hebrew characters derived from the hieroglyphs by Mr. John Lamb. Uh, 18, as we said before, this was 1835, brothers and sisters. So now when people say, oh, the Hebrew and the, and the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, there might be some similarity. Come on, man, this is 1835. You understand, Mr. John Lamb broke it down, and, and really he did a very good job breaking that down and making that connection. You understand, this is why we, we put this book um, forward again and republish it, Israel's Debt to Egypt, where Edward Sugden really shows that, that um, native cultural linguistic connection between the ancient um, Egyptians and the biblical Hebrews, known as the Israelites, the Beta Israel, oh, just excuse I, yeah, but we're going to go through with this. He was kneeling on this to present this right here. Um, and this particular book, Amarinya and Tigrinya, the Kaal Hieroglyphs, the Kaal Hieroglyphs, right? And this is by Legasa Ayelin. Legacy Island. All right? All right. Okay, so um, these are some of the documentations, the documents that we think is, is also very important to help us. And, and, and um, it's elementary. Some of these books right here are very elementary. You know, if we could provide this information and, and really circulate it, because these are documents, some of them, as we pointed out, 1835, that have been suppressed. Think about it. 1835, they were making those connections and links. Then we have um, the 1928 work 
of Edward Sugden, which is well known. If you look, if you look for it, Israel's debt to Egypt, Edward Sugden, you'll find it out there. But besides ourselves and perhaps a few others, in fact, we before we decided to publish it, we found that somebody had a copy of it for I think a couple of hundred dollars. You know, a couple of hundred dollars for a book. Like, wow. You know, I mean, this really, you know, keeps information away from those who need it the most, I and I. All right, so we're going to continue with, we're going to continue with this, right? We're going to continue with this particular teaching. So all of these documents that we have suggested, not, not even to uh, mention like Gerald Macy, you know, Gerald Macy's works. Gerald Macy's works are more like, like collegiate or collegiate level. Some of these are like studies for a semester where we would have to study, you know, over a semester to really, to really, um, to really get it like we should. So we're going to pause for the cause momentarily and then we're going to make a connection between this information that we've suggested and recommended, highly recommended, and this particular Torah portion and touching on um, the, the, the first seven of the ten plagues that we find in this particular parsha known as Vayera or Vayera, which at its root is about a revelation. You know, when you talk about the coming of Christ and Christ's second coming, if you were to study the scriptures, it more speaks not so much of, quote, coming in that sense, but it speaks of the revelation or the unveiling, like even the book of uh, the apocalypse. The apocalypse is a revelation or unveiling. And even this has a very key and significant link between this Torah portion, the Exodus, and the New Testament, and the revelation of Ras Teferi. So stay tuned. More to come, Yah willing. Shalom, Rastafari.